Hello and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program and massage industry experts. With the growing interest and popularity of the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, it's important we continue to support virtual learning and building massage community by connecting you with industry experts who share their knowledge and expertise on topics, not only for class discussion, but career success. Tonight's expert is Janet Wolf Blevins, who began her massage career in 1998 and for six years running won Best Massage Therapist in the Triad. She spends her time studying indigenous healing techniques and shamanism. She's also a Reiki master and holistic health practitioner, as well as a nationally approved CE provider. Janet is author of Acupressure for Body Workers and Herbalists, which published in November, 2021. Both her author series book review and her 2022 EduTalk on acupressure can be found on biotone.com under the EduTalk tab. Let's listen and learn as Janet discusses acupressure for grief and lung and large intestine channels. She'll take us a step deeper into understanding acupressure with focus on the metal elements of the lung and large intestine meridians. She'll share how to work on specific acupressure points for grief and letting go. And she'll discuss strengthening the channels for shoulder, neck, and arm pain. Please have pen and paper handy for taking notes. Again, there will not be a PowerPoint presentation or handouts with today's EduTalk. Feel free to chat questions during or comments during the presentation, which Janet will answer at the end. And with that, I turn it over to you, Janet. I'll see you on the other side. And thank you so much for presenting tonight. Oh, thank you, Donnell. And a big shout out and thank you for Biotone for doing these talks. It's, uh, it's really a great service that they do and I hope everybody takes advantage of those. All right, can everybody see me? I don't see anybody on the screen. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and talk anyway. So let's just have a little bit of background about um, acupressure and the meridians. So there's 12 major meridians in the body and they all flow in a circadian cycle. So it takes 24 hours for the meridian channels, the flow of chi to go through the body. And all the meridians flow from chest to hand, hand to face, face to foot, and foot to chest, okay? 24 hours, and they're bilateral, so you have two on each side. So we're gonna talk about lung and large intestine today. And lung is the very first one, starts here at the chest, goes to the thumb, its partner, which is yang, lung is yin, its partner is yang, large intestine starts on the index finger, so they're close, and comes all the way up and goes to the other side of the nostril on the other side. So let's talk about what metal means. And metal is fall time of the year. It's the time of year where, you know, the crops are going back to the soil, stuff is starting to rot and all becomes fertilizer so we can grow again in the new season. And that's the cycle. Cycle, you know, we grow and decline, grow and decline. And when you stop that cycle and something happens, that's when things get out of place. So if we go back while we're into the womb, the lung is the last organ that develops in vitro. So if someone's premature, those lungs don't fully develop and there you get the cycle of grief one way. So let's talk about metal personality first. It doesn't necessarily have to do with grief, but we'll talk about metal because lung and large intestine are metal. There's five elements in the body and each of those elements have emotional aspect to them. So when they get out of balance, all disease first starts with dis-ease on an emotional level. 
when you're paying too much attention. We had a great book in school in California when I was at Mueller College. It was called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And think about it. The zebra's out there on the Serengeti. It's grazing. Oh, lion, run. And it gets going and it's that fear. And then it stops. It doesn't stay in that fear. Okay. So lung has to do with grief when it's out of balance. Okay. Um, there's a sound. Think of your clients or your friends and stuff. Have you ever had clients come in and go and you go, hey, how are you doing? I'm good. That intake of breath is a small sign. The sound for grief in lungs and large intestine is weeping. And it doesn't have to mean somebody that's always weeping and crying. It could just be that little intake of breath. I'm good. Yeah, everything's good. Um, there's a smell to lung when, in large intestine when it's out of balance. So if you think about the fall time of the year and all the leaves are rotting in the ground, there's sort of that, that musky rotting sound. And I had an instructor from Asia who was saying they don't wear a lot of deodorant because then you can't tell when your body's out of balance. If you're healthy, your body doesn't create a smell. But when you start getting out of balance, that's when that smell occurs. So think about like that rotting leaves, rotting meat, congealed blood. That's the smell of lung extremely out of balance or large intestine. And so lung and large intestine are the organs that receive and release. Just think about intake of breath, exhale of breath, intake of food, and then the food releasing. And if you're holding on to stuff, stuff doesn't get released. Or if you're breathing too shallow and not getting everything in. You're only born with so much ancestral chi when you're born. This is the, you get from all your ancestors and your mother and your father. And you don't want to use all that chi, that energy, that life force up because that's when you die. And so you're always gathering chi, like maybe you're doing qigong or you're eating good food, gua chi. All the acupuncture points or acupressure points on your body are natural openings. They're called little caves or divots that open up and gather heaven chi. So when you're not allowed to breathe in that heaven chi, that's when you get a point that's a little tender and they call it ashi, you know, a little tender. And um, we're going to go over some points here in a little bit. But let's go back to the emotions of grief and letting go. Think of a client or maybe people you know, people who have been married together for years and years, 50, 60, 70 years. One of them dies. It's not too long, usually within another year, that the partner dies of pneumonia. That's extreme grief. I actually have a client who has um, had a son that died and the son died 30 years ago, but still hanging on to that, not letting it go. And she ended up developing large intestine, colon cancer. Hoarders become a part of this grief and letting go process because they can't let it go. It has to mean something. Um, becomes, people become very sentimental when they're in that decline of grief. Those are the people who will go to Goodwill or a thrift store, love that stuff, and then find a little object. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this means something. Somebody needs to treasure this, you know, this. Or they have all their dead relative stuff, you know. No one will forget Aunt Mabel because I have this and I can show it to them. And so that's where extreme hoarding comes into balance. That's another form of grief. Now, if we go back into the metal aspect, just metal doesn't mean it's out of balance, but metal people tend to want to know who, what, why, where, when. Those are your clients or your classmates that are always early. They're, I have clients that come 20 minutes early and they're usually very well dressed. They, uh, Think of classmates who want a syllabus, and if you're going over the class and you don't follow the syllabus, they get very upset. Uh, metal people like rules and boundaries, and they're very uncomfortable when you go outside that boundary. And they're always seeking usually the perfect teacher. All right, so let's go back into 
when I talked about ancestral grief. I know I'm jumping around, but I have lots of thoughts. So ancestral chi, you have that. You can, you can develop. Ancestral grief can pass on. Think of, I had a Choctaw teacher, Karen. She's very amazing herbalist. And she talks about generational ancestral chi and grief because think of Native Americans who've had their land stolen. So there's a lot of diabetes. So that's loss of sweetness in life. Um, and there's other cultures that have this ancestral grief. And when you hold on to it and doesn't let it pass, it keeps moving and moving and moving. So what we want to do when we're doing acupressure is actually working those channels to open up those caves so we unclog that stuff. I had another teacher, Trisha, she's a good friend too, and she talks about Ursula Le Guin. There's a story, what is it called? Buffalo Gals. And it talks about this girl who got in an airplane crash and Coyote found her and she wanted to repay Coyote. So she was cleaning up the cave one day and they had all these dried turds. And so Coyote come back and was like, oh, what did you do? Oh, my turds and went out and tried to grab them all and kiss them and stuff. So think about what you're holding on to, what kind of grief, all right? So lung channel, lungs, the first thing, that intake of breath. So lung one and two are right here. Um, one is about one and a half fingers down from the acromion and then lung two is right underneath the acromion. So if you feel those, they might feel a little bit tender. So in Chinese medicine, the heart is the prince or the king of the body, and the lung is the, what they call the minister or the counselor. It's the one that gives advice. And so lung, if you think about your clients, oh, my neck and shoulder hurts. What are they doing? They're curving their shoulders. They're curving that lung one and two, and their neck goes down. So actually lung one is a collection point. It's actually the collection of all the things we hold dear. So when you're holding on too tight to something or you're holding on to that grief and it's curved up in there, what do you think we're gonna get? We're gonna get neck pain, we're gonna get um, shoulder pain, we're gonna get frozen shoulder. So a really good way to work that in acupuncture is to grab lung one and lung two and to wave in and out your client's arm in both ways. Lung meridian is actually one of my favorite meridians because it affects so many stuff. And there's only 11 points. If you think about all the hundreds of points, the acupoints on the body, all these little caves, these little polios, there's only 11 to remember with lung. Okay, breathe in and it opens up the shoulder. This is great for frozen shoulder. It's great for rotator cuff, very important. And um, one of my stories in my book, too, I tell about, you know, developing that lung disease of grief and stuff. Um, if you're old enough to remember Christopher Reeve, Superman, you know, he had that horseback riding accent and he was paralyzed from the neck down. And his wife loved him dearly, took care of him. And then after he died, she died not long after of lung cancer. No history of smoking, no history of illness, nothing. Extreme grief. So lung one and two. Lung three and four, if you come down where the bicep is, there's two points right in here. You'll feel them, they're natural divots, natural holes. These are very important points, three and four. My um, acupuncture teacher in California called them the widow points. This is where people hold extreme grief. And a lot of times if you work on clients with these two points, they might tear up and cry. And this is usually a loss that is sudden. So, you know, the death of a friend, a family member, or a spouse, also the death or loss of a pet or a job or your favorite car, anything that people hold an emotional tie to gets stuck in here, okay? And usually when I do points, if I'm doing just the fingers, I'm just gonna go in and circle and clear. I always tell my students, if you're holding a pressure point with your thumb, you want, called duck bill. You want this little bill of a duck and then you've got these edges so you're not putting too much pressure on your thumb. So it's called duck bill. Another really good point is large intestine five. And it's a good point for rebellious chi. It's also a good point to catch your breath and breathe deeply. 
I always did it when I was at a sporting event and I had athletes who were out of breath. Maybe they just did a, a run or hurdles and stuff. So I usually grab them. So if you bend your arm, the little crease, the crease here at the elbow, there's a little indention right in here. And that's lung five. And just take a deep breath with that. And I said rebellious chi earlier, and you may not know what that is, but rebellious chi is chi usually that flows backwards energy-wise. So think of hiccups or burping. That's rebellious chi. The chi should go down and it's rising up. Okay. And then another really good point is lung seven. And if you're first feeling that you're getting a cold or you've got a client that has lots of sniffly stuff, you can grab it if you put your thumb here, your index or your index finger will hit a little hole on the side here. And this one's usually very tender. And lung seven is really good for that, that cold expansion of the chest. Just a deep breath. It's always good to breathe. You know, your inhale should be as long as your exhale. So if you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth, a long exhale. because. Americans tend to be very shallow breathers. And then another really good lung point that I like to tell people about is um, lung tin. It's fish border. And so in um, Chinese medicine, um, it, your hands are raised. So you're in the upper jowl, you have all your receiving things, taste, touch, sight, smell. And so all this inside part is yin where the outside part is yang. So lung runs on this yin side where large intestine is yang on the outside. So lung tin is right in the middle of this drumstick part, they call it fish border. And if you go right here in the center, you'll between the dark and the light meat is what they call it. You'll find a little, like you could put a penny, like a little slot in the coin machine. And it probably is tender is really good for sore throats. It's really good for people to find their voice. So I hit it a lot on women, especially because it's, you know, a lot of times women tend to be a little meek and mild. And it's a good point. I tell people if you're getting ready to go on a job interview or to find your voice, lung tin, very good point. All right, so as I said, the seasons, the sound, the smell, Let's go to large intestine. There's a couple of points I want to go through. There's 20 points in large intestine and it starts here at the index finger, what they call a tingwell point. But a really good point that most people hear about is large intestine four. Large intestine four is a master point, which means it's a quick downward rush of chi, which is also good if someone has a headache, a toothache, sinus pain, neck and shoulder pain. But because it's such a powerful downward force of chi, don't want to be pregnant unless you're ready to induce. It's a great inducer. Usually between 12 to 30 hours, someone can deliver. But do not hit this point if your client or you are pregnant. So it's really great for headaches, great for migraines, and most people get it wrong. So they're squeezing here. It's kind of like that old adage of you hear something and gets passed down and down and changes a little bit. So most people squeeze here. It's going to be tender in between this hoku point right here. But the actual point, if you, because we're following the large intestine on the index finger, if you come to where these bones meet, you'll feel a divot up here in the corner. And that should be very tender, much different than squeezing. So this is large intestine four. Can you see that? It's right in the divot where the two bones meet. Okay. Another great point is large intestine 11. And I use that on every single client. Um, in Chinese medicine, we usually tend to treat what could be the cause of something where a lot of times Western medicine treats the symptoms. It tells your body to shut up. Like, you know, headache, for example, there could be eight different causes for a headache in Chinese medicine, but in Western medicine, oh, here's some aspirin, you know, you tell the symptom to shut up. So large intestine 11 is really good for neck and shoulder pain, but what is really most excellent for is carpal tunnel. You know, a lot of times they have surgeries down here and it keeps coming back. But the point is actually, if you go in between your ulna and your radius, oh, sorry, my little camera shows me backwards. It's right here in the middle. 
and you squeeze in between those two bones, you'll feel a big divot. And I like to work my way down to the wrist. And a lot of times when you do that, the wrist adjusts naturally and it opens up and people who are numb feel that again. And so that works out very good. Um, and then large intestine, like I said, it comes up and goes around. 19 is here and then 20 is on the opposite. So this is really good if you feel like sinuses coming on um, to hit this right through here. Another really good sinus point is stomach three, which is right underneath the zygomatic arch. So let's go back and talk about grief. So there's so much grief going on and not you know only ancestral grief and chi that we might carry from being birthed or the stuff that we're carrying on to our, through our life, the things that happened to us that we're not letting go of. But what about all the grief in the world that's happening? Okay, we've got this you know, horrible, devastating earthquake where I can't even imagine all the people that have died. You know, we have wars, we have famines, we have all this stuff going on. And so that's up in this air, this heaven chi that we're breathing in. So a lot of times we're breathing in that grief and we want to not keep it with us, not to hold on to it. So um, if you're not pregnant, that's where large intestine four comes in really well. That's where lung five comes in really well. Just to breathe and let it go. Because remember, lung and large intestine are all about receiving and releasing, not holding on to stuff. Other symptoms of that besides allergies, asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia, and you know, also think of COVID. Um, I found this very interesting when COVID first happened, and that's a lung ailment when it first came out. All the people that started collecting, collections went up. I forget how many millions somebody paid for a baseball card from their youth. And so people, eBay and all these places were getting a lot more because people were collecting stuff that they remembered from their childhood that made them happy. So that was a way of coping with grief. So there comes in that hoarding part. And is that better? And so all that hoarding comes from grief or feeling grief, even the energy of the grief in the world. Uh, somebody who wants to see all the animals and all of a sudden they have 20 cats or 30 dogs or, you know, donates all their money to charity, giving, 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 giving. That's the way for them to get rid of that grief, but they're still holding on to it because they think they're the only ones that can help that cat or that dog or that charity. People overspend themselves. You're welcome, Mr. Miller Finch. And um, so think about that. And so lung five, and we, we want to recognize when we have this grief, uh, how long do you hold large intestine meridian? Actually, just any of these points, just by activating them, just by touching them, initiates it. It's like a push button. And if you feel, if you start to develop your sense of touch and you feel like a blockage, think of water. So chi is energy. It's water moving through the body. So if this little cave of large intestine four is blocked with a lot of, you know, baggage and, and crap and like stones and, and trees and stuff, it's going to feel hard at first or it's the water is going to feel sticky. There's different ways of um, textures to the skin and it's going to feel sticky. So if you hold the point, it feels a little bit sticky. Then go ahead and press in and hold and then think of the energy around it. You want to pull out the energy and then put in good energy. So pulling out lefty Lucy when you circle, taking a good breath, getting good chi, and then righty tidy, putting in good energy so that little cave is open to receive the heaven chi again and the cycle flows easily. Because each meridian flows into the other. So stomach is actually the mother to lungs. So a lot of times when you eat food that's not really good for you, then that affects your lungs. Has anybody known anybody that's eaten something and they all of a sudden start coughing? So that's not getting good nutrition from the mother and that causes a weakness in the lungs. Um, so receiving and releasing, 
and recognizing stuff. So all these emotion, everything has an emotion, lung and large intestine or grief, um, fire meridians are four fire meridians and they have to do with joy and depression. And a lot of times um, I said in the earlier talk that gets mislabeled as bipolar, but it's really just that energy, that fire burning up and burning down, burning up and burning down. And then water and kidney are fear and wood, liver and gallbladder are anger. So everything has an emotion. The thing is to receive that emotion, recognize what it is because it you know helps you through life, but not to hang on to it you know, to let it go. So that's the perfect thing. If you get the lungs and large intestines working right, receiving and releasing, and the body will do good. Um, lung also has to do a lot with the skin. You know, you actually breathe through your skin. I heard somebody say one time that when you're skydiving, you're actually receiving some type of air through your skin when you're really high up. And a lot of times when there are lung and large intestine problems, you have skin problems. So think about psoriasis, eczema, acne, boils. If your client has those, then you can work these points too to help sort of alleviate those symptoms. And the same thing, large intestine four is great for moving that energy because it's a master point, that quick downward rush of chi where these are just little buttons, but this is the big button, you know, boom. But not if they're pregnant, not at all if they're pregnant unless they're getting ready to deliver. And then lung five is great. And I can't read all that question. Maybe Donnell will get to that a little bit in a minute. It only showed part of it. And so lung and large intestine, everything has an orifice to the body. And this is nose. So you're, cause you're breathing in. So that's the orifice. And so anytime there's any sort of nasally allergy things that can happen and Allergies have a lot to do with grief. If someone's always getting seasonal allergies at the same time, maybe if they look back to see what happened to them at a certain time. I knew somebody who always got sick at Christmas and it turns out there was something that happened several Christmases, but they blocked that part out until they released that. So um, large intestine 20 is very good for that, that seasonal allergy stuff. So it looks like I did good. I'm right at the 630 mark. So if anybody has any questions, Donnell, I'll go back to you and we can spend some time answering those. I am back. Thank you. The one you couldn't see was from Janae. Maybe this is silly, but if lung is grief, is there an opposite or is that large intestine? No, lung and large intestine are the same. They both have to do with grief and letting go. So the direct opposite of that is the fire meridian, which has to do with joy. But when it's too much of joy, you know, the fires burn, 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 and then it collapses, becomes depression. So a lot of these meridians flow into one another, the emotion-wise. Um, JD is asking, which one was seasonal allergy point again? Okay, um, large intestine 20. And they're on both sides of the nose. So for the left hand, it would be the right side of the nose. If there's a divot right there, you guys can feel it. And then for the other hand it would be the opposite one. So you've got two little divots. Everything is a natural divot in your body, which is really amazing to me. So I have a question. Sure. Where or how do you know where to begin? I, I mean, if someone comes in to, for treatment, do they, do they chat with you and tell you what they're feeling or um, how, and then you say, okay, I'm going to start on the left side, or I'm going to start on the right side, or I'm going to start on the front, or I'm going to, how do you know? That's a perfect question. So if someone's just coming for massage, I'm going to take the clues of if they have a smell to them, if they have that weeping for example, which is large intestine and lung, which you're like, I'm good, nothing hurts. But they said, I'm good, you know. And then if I have someone who's just coming from acupressure, we go over exactly how they're feeling, is anything bothering them? And I lay out a treatment plan of just the points and stuff. Now, Susan has a question. Can you stay longer at a point for something than say at other points? If someone had bronchitis, would you would you be focusing on the points you showed or and 
uh, for a longer period of time. Yes, um, to activate, if someone's got a chronic condition that's really like in there or acute, um, lung one and lung two, I start with because that's the first intake of breath. And then I'm going to go to lung five, which I showed earlier, which is the crease of the lungs. And that helps with the moving of the chi and taking a good breath. And then I'll work those indigenous cultures and a lot of um, healing books and stuff out there talk about odd numbers, that prime. So doing something three times or five times or seven times. And I find three and five to be good numbers. So maybe I'll hit lung one and two, and then I'm going to hit five and then large intestine four to move it out. And then I'll do that two more times. And would you do that on both arms equally? Yes. yes. Okay. Because so they're bilateral. You know, you have lung and large intestine on both. All the 12 major meridians are on both sides of the body. So, you know, stomach comes down both sides here. You know, pericardium comes up both middle fingers on both sides. Um, okay, Noodles um, has a question. If you have congestive heart or pneumonia, what point would you use? Congestive heart failure or pneumonia? So let's address the pneumonia first because it's a little bit different. So the same thing, lung one and lung two, lung five. I would also do that lung seven. And then for congestive heart failure, a lot of times it becomes that swelling and where the blood's not pumping and then there's swelling in the ankles and stuff. So I'm actually gonna go and do some points that are further, better down on the leg. So you can write these down and you can look them up, but I like stomach 36, I like stomach 35 and I'm going to pull down with um, liver three and pull some energy down. And then heart point. There's a really, I, I love this point. So you have heart, heart starts underneath your arm. It goes to the little finger, there's nine points. Its partner, small intestine is on the other side of the little finger. So these two points are really good to hit together. And I had the same teacher in California say, it's a natural defibrillator. So if you feel like you're having a heart attack, if you bite down really hard on that, it gets that heart and that small intestine because they're both fire points and just bide you a little time when the ambulance comes. But that's also good points for um, congestive heart failure. Very interesting. Um, we do have a few more minutes. So if there are more questions out there or uh, when Janet's screen was a little high, um, if there's something you wanted her to point out again, um, please just chat it. Um, Cindy is asking, is there a good introductory book we can read? Yes, Acupressure <laughs> for Body Workers and Herbalists. And um, where would they be able to get the book? Uh, it's on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. So it's, it's print as you go. That way I'm not killing a tree for a bunch of books already printed and sitting in a warehouse. <laughs> okay. And also, again, um, Janet reviewed um, acupressure for body workers and herbalists for the EduTalk author series, which can be found on biotone.com under the EduTalk tab. And it's about 10, 15 minutes um, re long in the review. Now, um, another question came in, what about IBS, bloating, change in bowel movement textures? Okay, so like I said, there, there could be several different reasons for that. So large intestine, we would wanna balance that. You could do that with that large intestine four. And remember it's up here against the bone. And bloating has a lot to do with, if you go back further, the small intestine not being able to absorb. So you have these three jowls. The upper jowl is receiving energy, receiving, you know, taste, touch, sight, sound, smell, and also your food. And then the middle jowl, which is um, deciding what's good for you and what's not to, good for you. So if it's not working well, that small intestine, then it could be hanging on to stuff. And so I'd want to work some small intestine points. And you've got that small intestine one right here. There are also small intestine 10, which is on the back of the scapula, which is good for that, but it's also good for neck and shoulder pain. And then I would do stomach 35 and 36 again. 
And then also because of that swelling, spleen has a lot to do with dampness and swelling in the body. So spleen six and spleen 10 are excellent points. Um, let's see, I will repeat the name of your book, which is Acupressure for Body Workers and Herbalists. And another question, Janet, from Susan, someone once told me they sometimes use their fire finger. Does it matter? <laughs> and what, what, is the, what is the fire finger? <laughs> well, you have four fire meridians and it's interesting. So you have lung and large intestine here. You have uh, pericardium, you have San Jiao, and then you have heart and small intestine. So one of the, my favorite things is to say, if you're meditating, you're letting your fire meridians go. And so you're letting your ego go. And we used to kid, I we used to kid my students to get fired up and get mad. Pericardium ends right here. So pardon that. But it, a lot of people will use a fire finger, that middle finger that pericardium to move stuff out. And I, I mostly use fire fingers for wood. So if you think about um, fire burns up wood. So it's good if you've got something going on with the liver, gallbladder, meridians, especially migraines are very prominent with that. I would use a fire finger for an acupressure point. All right. Well, I don't see any other chats coming in. Um, I would like to ask how um, people can be in touch with you. I will, I will include this in the follow-up email tomorrow, but um, your website, how they can be in contact with you, how they can learn more. If you could just um, spend a minute sharing that information. Certainly, I have a website. It's sagedragonflyworkshops.com. And it has all my information on there. You can like and subscribe to my Sage Dragonfly uh, Facebook page. I do lots of updates quickly. And I actually have a really fun channel called I Am um, Not a Masseuse on YouTube that shows some fun videos of what not to do during massage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I and... love to travel and teach. And so if anybody wants a class in their area, you know, we, they can contact me. So I, I'm doing a lot of that next month, going to a lot of different spas and teaching for their employees and stuff. Well, that's wonderful and good to know as well. Uh, I would like to mention the upcoming edu talks that are coming up in March. On March 7th, and please join us, we have Kathleen Leeson speaking, presenting on mindfulness for the massage therapist. And on March 21st, we have Diana Thompson, mm -hmm. complex headache syndrome, focused evidence-based approaches. So two great topics coming up in March. Again, um, Janet had reviewed her book for the EduTalk author series and also presented about a year ago, um, this time on ac introduction to acupressure. And that is also on biotone.com under, uh, under the EduTalk tab. Um, I will include the links to both recordings in tomorrow's follow-up um, email. And if there aren't any more, oh, someone missed your web address. SageDragonflyWorkshops.com. SageDragonflyWorkshops.com. All right. Well, thank you so much. You. Always a pleasure to have you and so much information shared. And thank you everyone for joining us. Please watch your inbox for the follow-up tomorrow with the recording link. If you do not find it in your inbox, please check spam. And um, thank you so much. Join us in March. Uh, RSVPs are opening um, tomorrow for mindfulness for the massage therapist with Katherine, Kathleen Leeson on March 7th. Oh, thank you again, nice. Janet. Good to see thank you. you. Take, take care. care. Thank you, everyone, for joining yes, us. Thank you, everyone. All right. Take care. Be safe. Bye. Bye.